Hello, Bible readers. It's Friday, January 1st. Happy New Year. We're reading Psalms 5, 38, 41, 42, and John chapter 5, verses 18 through 47. In the Gospel of John, Jesus offends the Jews on three scores. One, he broke Sabbath by telling a man to carry his mat. Two, he's called God his father. And three, he's made himself equal to God by claiming that as God works on the Sabbath, so do I. They get it, right? So the Jews are upset about this. That's not the result that Jesus has come uh, to affect, but they do understand. They are getting the message. Um, they're right on all three counts. He is breaking the Sabbath from a human point of view. Uh, God is his father, and he is equal to that God. Um, instead of believing, instead of having those three things move them to belief and following him, resulting in power and freedom and righteousness, they seek to kill him, which means they get to hold on to the little scraps the, of power in this world that they think they have. They can't see beyond their Sabbath traditions or the power they think they have. So verses 19 to 30, Jesus is in the midst of a big discourse, a teaching, as he's defending himself at trial. Uh, life and judgment, Jesus is saying, happen now and hereafter. What's ironic is that, you know, the Jews have kind of put, not kind of, they've put Jesus on the spot. They're accusing him, while the accusers have become the accused over the course of Jesus's discourse. They become, the Jews become guilty of not honoring the Father by not honoring the Son. They can't continue to honor and worship God the Father without honoring and worship God the Son. They don't see that yet. Um, so verses 19 to 30 are about life and judgment. Verses 31 to 47 are about witness and accusation. And so we get a discussion of John the Baptist and the kind of witness he is and what he's witnessing to. Um, the Jews will not accept Jesus' offer to pass from death to life. Jesus is saying, basically, I'm here to perfect, to fulfill the Sabbath, and the Jews will have none of that. They will have none of that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the accusation, is that, uh, that, that Jesus is saying the Jews are, are in trouble. They're not accepting um, the good news. As we get into the Psalms, and notice that, that John story, that's not in the synoptics really at all. The, this whole discourse and equating Jesus as son to be on equal footing in terms with the idea of perfecting and fulfilling the law, that's something that the synoptics bring up. But this is a different angle. Uh, so John takes a little more to digest and understand, I think, at least for me. Uh, Psalm 5, righteousness does not go unopposed. Lead me, O Lord. And so there is this just declaration of truth that we're not just going to easily go along the way of the righteous. There's going to be opposition. Psalm 38, among the most impressive of individual laments, according to my commentary, uh, the church has seven penitential psalms. This is one of those seven. Uh, if you're wondering what the other six are, because I was, 6, 32, 51, 102, 130, and 143. Why put them all together when you can space them out, right? And finally, Psalm 41. Psalm 41 concludes book one of the Psalter. Um, it frames this whole section with Psalm 1. So Psalm 1 and 41 form kind of the book one of the Psalms. It's about an openness to the needs of others. It starts with a beatitude and then uh, continues with an understanding of an openness to the needs of others. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us at all times and in all places.